In the 1970s, computers were not the sleek devices we know today. They were colossal machines housed in air-conditioned rooms, tended to by engineers in white lab coats. These behemoths belonged to governments, universities and corporations, tools for the elite, inaccessible to ordinary people. The idea that a computer could sit on someone's desk, let alone in their home, was laughable. Yet, amidst this rigid landscape of technological conformity, a quiet revolution began, a revolution sparked by two young visionaries working out of a garage. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak weren't just tinkerers, they were dreamers. In 1976, in Jobs' modest garage in Los Altos, California, they assembled the first Apple computer, the Apple One. It wasn't much to look at, a circuit board mounted on plywood with no keyboard or monitor, but it was revolutionary because it brought computing power into the hands of individuals. Wozniak, the engineering genius focused on making the machine functional and affordable. Jobs, the visionary marketer, saw beyond the circuits. He imagined a world where everyone, not just scientists or corporations, could harness the power of computing. But convincing others of this vision wouldn't be easy. When Jobs and Wozniak approached tech giants like Hewlett Packard and Atari with their invention, they were met with ridicule. Executives dismissed the concept outright, questioning who would ever want a computer in their home, insisting that computers were meant only for businesses and institutions. Even after launching the Apple II, their first mass-produced model, critics remained skeptical. The Apple II had color graphics, a built-in keyboard, and slots for expansion. It was light years ahead of anything else on the market, yet many still doubted its potential. Meanwhile, another figure entered the scene, Bill Gates. A Harvard dropout with a razor-sharp mind, Gates co-founded Microsoft with Paul Allen. Their goal was to create software that would make these new machines useful. When IBM came calling in 1980, seeking an operating system for their upcoming personal computer, Gates seized the opportunity. But here's the twist, IBM didn't see personal computers as a long-term play. They treated the project as a side venture, outsourcing nearly everything, including the OS, to third parties. Gates offered them M's dose but retained ownership of the software. This decision would prove monumental. IBM executives mocked the idea of personal computers, dismissing them as mere toys and insisting that their mainframes would always dominate the industry. By 1981, IBM released its personal computer, the IBM PC. It was a watershed moment, signaling that even the biggest names in tech couldn't ignore the growing demand for smaller, more accessible computers. But IBM made a fatal mistake. They failed to lock down exclusivity over their components. Other companies quickly reverse engineered IBM's hardware, creating IBM compatible clones. Meanwhile, Microsoft licensed M's dose to these competitors, turning their operating system into the de facto standard. At the same time, Apple continued to innovate. In 1984, Jobs unveiled the Macintosh, featuring a graphical user interface that made computing intuitive for non-technical users. With its iconic 1984 Super Bowl commercial, Apple positioned itself as the rebel challenging the status quo. While IBM clung to outdated assumptions, Apple and Microsoft embraced the future. One company saw personal computers as a threat to their dominance. The other two saw them as an opportunity to redefine the world. The impact of personal computers was nothing short of transformative. Suddenly anyone could write a letter, balance a budget, or design artwork without needing specialized training. Schools adopted PCs to teach students programming and problem solving. Businesses used spreadsheets to analyze data faster than ever before. Gamers discovered immersive virtual worlds and creatives found new ways to express themselves digitally. Then came the internet, a natural extension of the personal computing revolution. What started as standalone machines became interconnected hubs linking humanity across continents. Email replaced snail mail. Online forums fostered global conversations. E-commerce reshaped how we shop. And social media transformed how we connect. All of this stemmed from those early days in Jobs' garage and Gates' dorm room. So what can we learn from this tale of innovation and disruption? First, progress often begins in unlikely places in garages, basements, and dorm rooms. Second, 
Great ideas are frequently met with resistance. HP executives laughed at Jobs and Wozniak, dismissing their vision as impractical. IBM underestimated the PC's potential, treating it as a niche product rather than a game changer. Those who cling to the past risk being left behind, while those who embrace change shape the future. But perhaps the most powerful lesson is this. True innovation requires courage. Courage to challenge conventional wisdom. Courage to persist despite rejection. Courage to believe in a vision others can't yet see. Today we live in a world unimaginable to those early pioneers. Smartphones, tablets, AI, they all trace their roots back to that humble apple eye. So ask yourself, what paradigms exist in your life that are ripe for disruption? Where do you see opportunities others overlook? Be bold. Be relentless. Be the one who dares to reimagine what's possible. And remember, revolutions aren't born from comfort. They're forged from courage. Now go out there and create the future.